What's up everybody? So, my name's Russ, rwgresearch.com. So I recently uh, been messing with this E. Carey, the ant. I did a video about how to fix a bunch of stuff, but I left off one thing, which was the hot end uh, Z probe stuff. Um, I did that because in the instructions there are some information on the SD card of how to put the new hot end in there and stuff. But I don't think it mentions anything about how to adjust the Z sensor. So I figured, real quickly, I would tear it apart and just show you guys what's in there, how to fix it if there's a problem or what could potentially go wrong and just have a little look inside there. I've been replacing all the yellow parts with black 3D printed parts because I like the black. It's a stealth look. So while I'm in there, I'll go ahead and replace this in case you ever need to do that as well. Let's get started. Once again, hard to see here, but turn the printer this way so you can kind of see there. I get you a close up. There are two screws on each side that take this entire black housing off, so we're going to start there. All right, now that we got that off, we can pull this casing off. Now, all of the wires actually go through this hole so you can't get this case out of the way very well but I um, guess that's okay we'll just leave it like that for now let's have a look at what's inside all right I've decided I'm going to pop this wire casing off so that I can slide this a little bit more out of the way just so we can get in here and work on this. So there is a fan on the inside of this housing and the wires go back to there. We've got two wires for the thermistor, two wires for the heating element. We've got two wires for the power and ground for the fan. And then we've also here got power ground and a signal wire for this little optical board right here. So as you can see, when the hot end hits, this entire thing moves and there's a sensor inside here, an optical sensor, and that's what determines when it hits the bed. So let's break it down a little bit more so we can really see what's going on in there. Alright, so here we are. We're zoomed way in on this thing. And we want to see what's going on. So on the side, Okay, there are some springs right here. Those springs are what pushes this back down. Now, the hot end, actually, the aluminum, everything holding the hot end on is just sort of sitting in there. It's a little looser to my liking, but that's how it is, and it doesn't really seem to cause a problem. As long as there's enough um, down pressure to hold this in, in place while it's printing, I don't see it being a problem. So it is really hard to see. However, let's see if I can get you a slightly better angle, a focused one. Okay, so there is a little screw that comes through and it's threaded into the hot end. Let me get a side shot because you can see it better. All right, so there's your side shot, and you can see uh, you can see the white background. So do you see that that little screw that's right there? Okay, it is threaded into there and you can get to it from the top. So you can actually put a Allen wrench on the top side and screw that up or down and that sets the height of when it triggers this optical sensor. Let's pop the optical sensor off just so you can see what it looks like. All right, we've got that popped off there. And as you can see, it's a very basic optical sensor. So I'm not sure if the plastic part here will come off. Looks like it's glued on there, but basically there's an LED on one side and a receiver and also an LED receiver on the other side. And anytime you put something in the way, it triggers the output. It looks like there is a little piece of circuitry on here to actually send a signal out, just a transistor it appears. Very simple basic circuit and that just sits on there like that. 
So you don't really ever need to take this off or adjust this, you just need to adjust the screw on the inside. So there you can see that adjustment screw, and I'm not really sure what holds it in place. Looks like mine's pretty tight, there's probably some Loctite on there. But basically moving that screw up and down adjusts exactly where this thing triggers. So it's very straightforward and everything again here is all aluminum. The top piece, the hot end, the brace, the bracket. Um, it appears that even the slide rails are some sort of a, they look like steel possibly. So it's a pretty easy straightforward setup so it shouldn't be hard to understand how this works. But basically you just want to adjust that up or down till you get it set to where you just barely want it to touch and, and trigger. So you can actually do that while the system is on and I'll show you how. So I'm going to go ahead and just reassemble this thing and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the new fan in as well. Here is the entire fan assembly. It's pretty straightforward. Two screws on the back hold this in place. Screw holes are already there. And then two screw holes on the front hold the front in place. So pretty straightforward. In case you're wondering, here is what the fan looks like, and apparently this is a sample. <laughs> 24 volts, 0.1 amps. Uh, it's a BA03010B24U. I'll probably end up getting a few of these little fans. It seems to work pretty well. Pretty compact. Alright guys, I got it all put back together. I want to show you what it looks like from the top. So from the top, it is still very difficult to see, but if you look down that hole, there is a screw down there. Really difficult to see. It's got an Allen head on it. Appears to be a 1.5 millimeter hex. And so I've just got this thing powered on now what we're going to do is, if you push here, you can see the light comes on. So you can see I'm, I'm actually like not even moving it, I'm just barely touching it. So if I stick my Allen wrench in there, actually get it on the screw. Alright, if I screw it down. I have to push a little bit more and if I if I put my uh, Allen wrench in there you can see I'm triggering it okay so you kind of kind of adjust it and see where it's at and you basically want it to where it just barely touches it and it triggers you just want to keep adjusting it until you get it to where you like it so if it's always on, it means the screw is too far up like this and it's sitting there all the time. Okay, so. You can see I'm, I'm wiggling it. And if I get it in the right spot, look at that, it stays on and fades out slowly. So you want to make sure it's not staying on all the time. That's the important part. All right, so after you got that uh, set to where you like it, you can go to the info screen, go to prepare, and go to Auto Home. And as long as it's working correctly, it should trigger. If for some reason it's already triggered, it will basically stop somewhere else, or if it has a false trigger. So do that again. There you go, triggered just fine. So let's go ahead and run a auto level. And you really want it set up to where it doesn't really move hardly at all. Okay, I'm gonna run it again. 
just so you can see it. It really doesn't move. It's so close to being triggered while it's running that it's just right, and that's what you want. Easy. All right, guys. Well, it's basically that simple. You really only need to adjust the screw on the top so that the sensor is triggered. If you have any other actual problems, there could be a circuitry problems or other issues, but basically that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. If you need to know how to replace the hot end itself, look in the instructions manual. It's basically the exact same thing I just did. And then there's one more, two set screws on the side, which the whole thing just slides out. It's pretty easy. You put the new one in, good to go. Alright, thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you didn't. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and if there's anything else you want to see on this machine, please let me know, and I'll see what I can do about it. Bye!